Hello everyone, I'm Diana and today we are going to talk about the BitCountry Metaverse. As you know, play-to-earn metaverses are getting a lot of attention right now. Metaverse with its own economy and unique features is something that a lot of people are waiting for. Our guests Chris and Gardy represent the first metaverse on the Dotsama ecosystem BitCountry. Hello Chris, hello Gardy, we are so happy you've joined us today. We follow your social media and we really like what you are doing. We've got a ton of questions from the community and picked some of them for you. So let's start with the main part. Okay, the first question. We have been at an incredible demo day and have seen the development process. It's been more than two months since that day. Can you tell us what has changed since then? Thank you for your question, Diana. The team has continued to make progress, you know, these last two months. We have grown rapidly since our last demo day. We added 10 new team members to the engineering and community management teams, and we continue to grow. Um, the team have also made notable progress in metaverse economics and governance and chaos land prototyping and, you know, just getting ready for our TGE, which is coming this weekend. So we've been very busy <laughs> since our last demo day. Thank you. Next question. Let's talk about the launch. When do we expect the first users to appear in the BitCountry metaverse? Users will be able to access the metaverse with their avatar in the phase eight of the network launch in our roadmap. Uh, first, we need to be sure that we have tested all the functionalities and that everything is operational. So yeah, we will be sharing a link with uh, the whole roadmap so you can track all the progress uh, towards, uh, towards the launch. Thank you. Next question. The project has accumulated quite a large community. Many of them have not only participated in the crowd loan and community sale on Tokensoft, but have been supporting the project since the beginning of its development in the ecosystem. As far as I know, the testnet has been running for almost a year and many node runners are asking the same question. Will there be any reward for testnet? Perhaps any chance for them to become a collector on the mainnet? We appreciate all the support from our amazing community and we will certainly be rewarding them for their efforts. The test node operators will be gifted with an NFT as well as the future opportunity to be collated on the mainnet. The BC Network Council will be gifting um, collator node NFTs and they will be rewarded on three different levels. And the council will score these based on committed uptime for powering our metaverse testnet. And the breakdown will be as follows. So level one will be for the top one and level two will be from the top two to 50 and level three will be um, the top 51 to 500 and we will only be minting 500. So that is sure to be exciting and it's a great way for us to reward the community for all their support. Okay, next question. The ambassador program helps attract a large number of followers to the project. How will the ambassador program be incentivized? First of all, I need to mention that the ambassador program is currently in a restructuring phase. We have received a lot of interest from our valuable community and well, the structure will have multiple level of ambassadors apart from the candidacy. Uh, the reason of this is because we want to make it as fair and as transparent as possible. So different levels of ambassadors will depend on the amount of time, the amount of efforts, the type of content and the quality of content that they, that they are delivering. Uh, of course, each level will have different incentives and the only advice that I can give the community or people who wants to join the ambassador program today is submit, be active with the community, create content, create tutorials or any type of content that will help them understand and learn more about BitCountry. Thank you. When we were preparing for this session, we did a survey among the community and fairly common question was about the BitCountry land. People are worried that the land they get won't have any buildings on it or they might lose these buildings somehow. Can you tell us more about the landscape? There's two systems related to building in the world. The first is the voxel system, so think Minecraft, 
and a more traditional 3D system. With the voxel world, you build it by looking where you want to place a block and by clicking the appropriate button, you will place the block there. And for placing 3D models or NFTs with 3D models, it'll be mostly a similar experience, but you'll be given a preview of the 3D asset as you're placing it. And so you can make some tweaks if you want to, to its rotation, um, its scale or positioning before you place it in your world. And then when you start with your land, it'll it'll be mostly empty and it'll be up to you to decide, you know, how you want to build it out. Um, and you can start with your own creative designs, your NFTs or 3D or otherwise, and it will always be stored safely on the blockchain. So it cannot be lost, it must be said. Later, you'll be able to persist or NFTize the position, scale, rotation um, of your assets that you place into the world. Um, and that'll be later on in our roadmap. Thank you. Next question. We often hear from other projects in the Dotsama ecosystem talking about partnering with you. Some of them say that they will integrate their product into your network. What projects are already working closely with you in this direction? So all partnership announcements are communicated via Medium. And we will share the link with your viewers so they can go check it out. Now, so far, we have announced official partnerships with Akala for um, the compatibility test, Fala for the infrastructure services, Bifrost and Zenlink for the crowd learn options, and then um, the following for uh, Metaverse collaboration. We have Republic, Republic Realm, MetaDojo, Remark, Manta, SubDAO, Ash Wall Street Bets, and the Siri Network or for me to this collaboration. Thank you. Next question. I can speculate that blockchain-based games would want to integrate their platform into the BitCountry metaverse. How will they be able to use their token and your native BitCountry token? The easiest way to explain it is that you will need the native token, which is new or near, depending on the network, to mean your own social token. So. Once your social token is deployed, the blockchain or the BitCountry blockchain is already full EVM compatible. People can just create smart contracts, even fork exchanges like Uniswap or you name it. And yeah, you can start trading your token and people will be able to participate. Maybe you can incentivize your communities with different liquidity programs, different rewards. So you can kickstart your own digital economy in the metaverse. Okay, thank you. Do you have any plans on implementing VR and AR technologies? Do you have any thoughts on that? Maybe you can show us a little demo of the current state of BitCountry world exclusively for this AMA. XR, which is including VR and AR, is definitely considered in our roadmap. If First focus will be, of course, building the biggest metaverse, community built actually, because it's going to be, the metaverses are going to be community built. And once we are sure that uh, the whole functionalities are functional, working, and the people are happy interacting with the metaverse, we will start exploring the addition of VR, AR, or the whole set of XR. Thank you, next question. Can you tell us a bit more about the in-game economy? There are two important tokens uh, related to the economy of BitCountry and Metaverse Network. The native token, NUM or NIR, depending on the network, and BIT, uh, called PBIT for Pioneer. Uh, BIT is going to be earned through mining activities uh, and is going to be allocated to each user based on their mining power or different activities that they are performing within the Metaverse. Uh, the allocation of uh, the BIT is going to be a slice of the total BIT distribution. It's not that we are going to set a specific amount of uh, BIT for each person. No, it's going to be a full pool and the pool will be distributed uh, across different users. Why BIT? Well, many activities in the metaverse will have the need for BIT, such as building their land. Uh, BIT is going to be actually used uh, for placing voxels within your land or your metaverse. And uh, it can be used also for interacting with other 
uh, user activities like convert it into power that you will need to use to main your own NFTs or perform certain activities within the metaverse. Okay, thank you. What is the available set of actions for players in the world? That is such a great question. <laughs> there will be a progressive release of activities for players when the web client goes live. For example, in Chaos Land, it'll be starting with economic related activities, such as, you know, bit mining um, and power conversion cons consumption, before moving into building activities, you know, for the community to start building out their land with voxels, NFTs. 3D assets and such. Uh, more economic activities will be released in between, giving more ways for users to earn their allocated bids. And after this, the roadmap includes the experience framework where, you know, um, mini games and missions can be added or created by the community. You know, and enabling these new experiences will, you know, create the opportunity for, you know, people to customize their land further with said activities and opening the opportunity to run businesses and services within their metaverse. Well, that's all the questions we got for this AMA session. Thank you, Gardi. Thank you, Chris. That definitely was a very valuable information for all followers of Beat Country. Thank you so much for having me today. Thanks everyone for watching. Follow us to get the latest updates from the Dot Summer ecosystem. Goodbye.